the ferns are basically as tall as me now. <laughs> Whew. Trail's getting a little hard to follow. I think today is gonna be an example of type three fun, uh, which is to say not fun at all. It's not fun when it's happening and it's not fun to tell stories about it later. Uh, like, uh, oh, wasn't that crazy? We made it through that, oh no. This is just gonna suck today and it's gonna suck talking about it. <laughs> um, the bugs are insane today, even with my bug shirt, bug net, and mosquito mittens, I am getting bitten a considerable amount. I mean, imagine a game of darts. You know, instead of having two darts to hit a target, uh, the mosquitoes have 100 darts to hit a target. So, like on my mosquito mittens when I'm hiking, when I'm using my trekking poles, they are climbing down in the crevices and, like, <laughs> weaseling their way in there. Um, so, they are winning. They are winning today. Um... I was actually, before I got to the Bob Lake Forest Campground where I met Patty and Dave uh, two days ago, I was starting to panic because I remembered, I think this is right, that Bob Lake was the campground that Luke Jordan, um, aka Strider, trail name Strider, um, that was the campground where he ended up sleeping in a latrine because the bugs were so bad. <laughs> and I'm just, uh, get to slack pack today, thank you pa Patty and Dave. Um, I'm going to actually try to do about 20 miles today, and I'm just praying that that gets me out of whatever the hell is going on in here with the mosquitoes. Um, good news is we're already at mid-July, so this can't possibly last for much longer, right? Yeah, right. Um, today is not going to be about uh, enjoying the forest probably at all. Today is really going to be about getting the miles done. Sorry. Snip. Don't touch that stuff. It's like poison ivy, kind of. Well, the mosquitoes uh, calmed down after about eight, I think it was about eight miles west of um, the Bob Lake Campground Spur. So it's been really nice hiking um, since then. It's a beautiful day. Feeling really strong, probably thanks to <laughs> Patty and Dave's great cooking. We had like a perfect day yesterday. My plan tonight is to, when we get back to camp, to jump straight in the lake. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like counting down the miles through Michigan now. I'm um, at about 125 miles left in Michigan. I'm going to be sad to leave this state behind. Met a lot of wonderful people here. Did a lot of amazing hiking. It's not done yet. Still got 125 miles and a lot of cool stuff to see in that, so. There's a porcupine. Oh, God. Backing up. Backing up. I'm backing up, Mr. Porcupine. Apparently he didn't want to go that way. This is really deep here. Uh, and I think it gets, yeah, it gets even deeper. I, I don't want to ford here. I'm going to go try to find a shallower spot. I don't know if it exists. I think this is going to be funny enough that you guys deserve to watch it. Because I'm pretty sure I'm about to fall in this thing.
woods again on my own. Patty just uh, dropped me off back at where I left off yesterday near Okundakun Falls. Patty and Dave gave me all sorts of extra treats like chocolate chip cookies and a banana and tangerines. <laughs> Whether you're, I'm leaving town um, or leaving the great company of people like Patty and Dave, uh, there's a little bit of an adjustment period the day after that where I feel a little lonely. Um, but it's a beautiful day. Clear blue skies. There's no mosquitoes in this part of the forest. It's a great way to start. Trail's really clear and nice. Um, kind of the big events today will be um, going through Old Victoria, which I believe is an old mining community. So I'm hoping to take lunch there. And, um, and then just a couple miles down the trail after that, I will hit my third way point on this hike. I will be a third of the way done, which feels awesome. Uh, this was company housing for the copper mining company. Uh, families would live downstairs. They would have borders upstairs. Here's a picture of the Usamakis. That's one of the families that lived here. Uh, they had nine children while they were here. When the youngest was born, the oldest was 15, so she was probably out being a servant in a boarding house or somewhere else. But this would have been the family bedroom. And the overflow of children would have been on straw mats on the floor. Wow. And upstairs there would be boarders, maybe 10, 11 guys, mm -hmm. but in shift work. They wouldn't all be up there at one time. You're welcome to take a look upstairs. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Mary also drove me down the road to the spring so I could get some cold water. <laughs> <laughs> on a day like today, you need it. Thank you. You guys do a really good job here. Well, we try and, and the restoration never ends. I bet. I bet. That's pretty cool that they let the trail go right through here. Nature taken back over. Oh boy. And we got some views. That was a lovely uh, interlude there, hiking interlude at uh, old, the old Victoria um, mining village. So the folks who live there would have worked in the copper mines that uh, were in these hills. So I'm, I'm entering into the trap hills now. <laughs> and I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared. Um, I've heard a lot about these hills. Uh, it's going to be a lot of elevation change. That means climbing up and down and up and down and up and down. I've heard I'm going to get some phenomenal views. Um, 
but I'm carrying a ridiculous amount of food y'all for three days. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have shunted my food. I should have gotten rid of half of the food I'm carrying right now. Uh, <clears throat> this was a dumb idea. I'm already <laughs> struggling with the heat and the humidity. And then on top of that, my pack is super heavy. So, and a lot of the water sources on the map, um, are not flowing right now. So I don't really have any way to know if, uh, the water source that I'm aiming for for camp tonight even has water in it. Um, so that's got me a little stressed out, but. No, I'm too chicken. I'm too chicken. There could be a bear in there. All right, here I am on top of Lookout Mountain. And I have officially hiked a third of my halfway through hike. That's 800 miles. That 1600, you know, left to go feels totally manageable now. <laughs> Wow. It's a good view to celebrate. super early this morning to, to try to avoid the worst of the heat. It got scuppered by a pretty intense thunderstorm last night that started up at 3.45 in the morning. And then it just poured for like four hours. Everything I have is wet. <laughs> Everything is wet. So new plan, I think it's like nine o'clock. Just gonna have a cup of coffee, eat a giant breakfast and head on out. Um, I was hoping, I'm hoping to do at least 16 miles today, maybe 17, but we'll see what the Trap Hills have to say about that. Like third break of the day already and it's only noon. Um, one thing that's very different for me on trail compared to my kind of my desk job life as I think of it is I have to really pay close attention to my body and what it needs. I'm constantly checking in with how I'm feeling, um, listening to the signals, uh, in conditions like the ones I'm in today where it's uh, very humid. It hasn't gotten as hot yet as yesterday, I don't think, but the humidity was probably at like 90% this morning um, right away after that thunderstorm. And so I've just been sweating buckets. I'm feeling um, like maxed out already. I'm feeling a little queasy, which uh, can be a sign for me that I'm having some kind of hydration issue. The main one people are aware of is dehydration. I, I learned on my last long hike that there's a second one called hyponatremia, which is overhydration. When you get too much water can be just as dangerous as dehydration. Um, so I'm not sure <laughs> what's going on with me today. It also could just be old school, just heat exhaustion or I think I'm just going to have to accept that I'm going to have a harder time today and take lots of breaks and be very careful. Um, as a solo hiker, I definitely don't want to develop any of those conditions, all of which really impact your ability to think clearly. Uh, that would be uh, real bad. <laughs> and I'm very, very conservative about things like that. 
um, when I'm hiking by myself. This is in water. This is me checking the color of my urine. And it would appear to be completely clear, which is bad. I need to get some salt in me. Dang, I guess I overhydrated this morning. Dang it. That's where I was trying to get by tomorrow night to do then a six mile road walk into town. That just does not feel possible right now. I'd have to get like at least another six miles done tonight. Well, somehow I managed to get uh, 15 and a half miles hiked today. I have no idea how I struggled so much today. Uh, sticking my head in that creek really helped. <laughs> Hoping to go farther, but a massive thunderstorm rolled through and it sounds like it's starting up again. Um, this, is a, this would be the third time it's rained in like the last hour and a half. And the inside of my tent is all wet. <laughs> So I'm probably going to be all wet by the end of the night. Well, what are you going to do? What are you gonna, it was, started pouring right as I was setting it up. I, you know. All right. I'm going to go to bed because my goal is to get up really, really, really early tomorrow. Uh, in the hope that I can actually get into town tomorrow. But that would be 21 and a half miles. Uh, six mile road walk after 15 and a half miles through the trap hills. Kicking my butt. Trap pose. Good morning. Whew. All right, first half mile. Trap hill is already kicking my butt for the day. Yesterday, they literally kicked my butt. Um, this rain is providing a new uh, challenge with this elevation change. Um, everything's wet and also often covered with leaf litter. So. I, I can't always see if you're stepping on a slippery rock, which is what I did yesterday. And I fell and I, I fell directly, unfortunately, onto a very sharp, jabby rock that looked like this. It was blunt edged on the top. Luckily, there was probably could have been worse right on my left glute. And I bruised that muscle pretty deep. Um, it hurt so bad yesterday that I was uh, worried that I actually tore it uh, and I can't sit on it right now. <laughs> but thankfully, hiking is fine. Um, so I know it's not hurt too bad. I think it's just bruised, but got a later start, of course, than I, than I wanted to, but I think early enough to make it to town. We'll see. And I'm super motivated because all of my stuff got wet. We had like six thunderstorms, I had six, six thunderstorms come through last night. Well, I'm sitting on the side of this forest road. Um, and you know, a, f a few people offered me help uh, if I needed it when I was out here. And I went ahead and contacted one of them, Sarah, um, because I just, I just feel too off. There's something off and uh, I fell again on the rocks. Um, I just got lucky that it wasn't, you know, worse fall. Um, and I just, I just feel really, really weak and um, so weak that I, I just don't feel safe being out here alone right now. So, um, so I'm really sorry, Sarah. Um, but Sarah, I think can come get me later this later today. And uh, I think I'm, I feel kind of silly now having reached out to her, but I'm not taking it back. Um, I just am feeling an instinct to get to town and kind of get some rest and regroup and see how I feel um, after a couple of days maybe. I hope I'm not making a big deal out of nothing, but I'm not really like that. I'm My tendency is more like to push myself too far. So the fact that I'm actually willing to 
reach out for help right now um, to me is all the confirmation I need that something's something's wrong and I need to accept that and and respond to it if what's going on with me does turn out to be something medical like maybe I'm just getting sick or you know maybe I did pick up a tick bite that's you know or something like that or water illness I don't I don't have any symptoms like like that to my knowledge I'm just feeling super super weak so now I'm just gonna sit here for a while and relax well I made it uh, safely to the Contica um, Black Bear Resort in White Pine Michigan thanks to Sarah thank you Sarah um, yesterday was a scary day and the, and the day before um, I think that I unfortunately just had basically a physical breakdown on a stretch of trail that is just difficult to get on and off of. So I'm very lucky that, you know, Sarah reached out and I got to have a great day of hiking with her and that she offered her help if I needed it. Um, even the first day on this last section, I did 20 miles and I just felt like a beast, you know. I was telling Patty and Dave, like, I feel like my body is ramping up to a, a next level of, of capability and, and what it can do. And then the next three days was just me uh, literally feeling like I could not get down the trail. Um, what I may have to do is actually retreat and go home for a few days or at least stay here for a few days. I mean, it could just be that I'm worn out after hiking the UP. Could be that simple or it could be something more. Uh, but I think uh, I'm just gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do today. I don't know. <laughs> struggling physically and I'm struggling to make a decision too.